All right, let's do surgery. So for example, we have got a case, uh, you are in the GP setting and our patient is Arthur Murphy, age 75. So 75 year old man, uh, we have got and he presented to the hospital or the clinic with dysuria, that is uh, burning micturition. Right. Uh, talk to the patient, take history examination and discuss the initial plan of management. When somebody 75 coming to us with this urea, there are lots of things which will be going on in our mind. Uh, first of all, I would say the cancer, uh, maybe prostate cancer, right? 75, so we are going to make sure we are not missing the cancer stuff. That is must, right? So cancer, prostate, uh, it might be simple like UTI as well, uh, BPH. It might be like stones, ureteric stones might be there and it might be epididymo orchitis as well. Not very common but it can be, isn't it? Because 75 years of age and epididymo orchitis is kind of infection where we are thinking you might get positive sexual history as well, which is unlikely in an age of 75. But still we can put it as our differential. So we have got these things in our mind when a person of 75 year old, male gentleman coming to the clinic with this urea right so let's discuss about uh, say uh, UTI BPH so what we will be having so the patient is of UTI BPH what are the questions that we should ask so these are the symptoms for UTI let's see suprapubic pain yes a patient will be having mild discomfort or suprapubic pain burning sensation while passing urine burning micturition patient might have fever fever or chills rigor can also be there Fever, flu-like symptom, nausea, vomiting. That is pretty important. Nausea, vomiting. Patient might have cloudy urine, smelly urine. That is very, very important. Frequency can be there. Frequency meaning patient has to go to the loo more often. Maybe like initially they used to go twice a day. Now they are going four or five times. Right, so that's frequency. Nocturia. You can ask like you have to wake up in the night to go to the loo. Maybe initially they used to wake up maybe once or they were not waking up. But now they have to wake up two, three times to pass urine. That is our nocturia. And uh, we have got hesitancy as well. And usually, you know, hesitancy is more common in BPH because these are the symptoms of uh, your BPH. Hesitancy you will see in BPH, but it might be in UTI as well. But sometimes you might see urgency actually in uh, uh, UTI. There are lots of symptoms of UTI and BPH which are overlapping. For example, frequency, nocturia, urgency, and hematuria. These are the symptoms which are overlapping between UTI and BPH, right? So UTI, we have got suprapubic pain, we have got burning micturition, fever, nausea, vomiting, cloudy, smelly urine, frequency, nocturia. Instead of hesitancy, I will be going more towards urgency. Urgency simply means it's urgent to pass urine. Do you have to rush to the loo? That is urgency, right? And hematuria, if you have noticed blood in your urine, if you have noticed if there is a change in the color of your urine that is hematuria now if you are thinking about bph so what we have got we have got frequency yes do you have to go more often to the loo these days nocturia do you have to wake up in the night urgency do you have to rush to the loo hesitancy see many people they are having confusion between urgency and hesitancy see urgency it is urgent for the patient to go to the loo so simply you can ask do you have to rush to the loo but what about hesitancy? Hesitancy is patient is already in the loo, but it is taking a bit of time before he starts urinating. He is hesitant. So what you can ask, you can ask, uh, uh, do you have to wait before the urine starts coming? Right. That is, do you have got problem in the initiation of the urination? That is your hesitancy. What about incontinence? Incontinence is unable to hold. Simply ask, are you able to hold your urine? Right, so that's our incontinence. Dribbling, what is dribbling? You can simply ask, do you have got any dribbling? Or you can ask, once you finish your urination, do you feel that few drops of your urine, they stains at your underpants? That is your dribbling. Right, and hematuria if you have noticed any change in the color. Right, and there are a few more things if you want to ask, you can ask. You can ask for uh, poor stream. You can ask for uh, poor emptying. Right, you can ask how is the stream of your urine if you have noticed any change in the stream. You can ask, uh, like once you finish your urination, still you feel that the urine is still there in your bladder. 
that's your poor emptying so you can ask these questions as well this will be going towards a bph right so that's the main thing that you need to cover in uti in bph right so if you're thinking about the differential so we have got uh, UTI, so we are asking these questions. BPH, yes, we are asking these questions. Cancer prostate, so what we can ask for cancer prostate? We can ask lots of other things as well. We can ask for uh, uh, simple generalized symptoms of cancer, isn't it? So we can ask for uh, weight loss. We can ask for loss of appetite. We can ask for uh, anemia symptoms we can ask for lumps and bumps right so that's the thing that we can cover in these stations right so ask for weight loss ask for loss of appetite ask for anemia symptoms like tiredness dizziness palpitation heart racing and lumps and bumps that's for lymph nodes right so that's how we can cover and if you're thinking about stone or pyelonephritis so we can ask about the pain if the pain is there in the loin that is coming to the groin and uh, patient has got chills, rigors, all these things can be asked if you're covering this thing. Apididymorchitis, so we will be asking fever flu-like symptoms. Patient might have some redness, swelling, uh, hotness in the private area and patient may be having positive sexual history. So that's what we can ask. For UTI BPH, yes, age, as the age is progressing, of course, the chances of BPH are high. Renal stone, yes, that can give you UTI. And STI, of course, can give you orchitis and large prostate, that's your BPH. So all these are the risk factor of your UTI. Patient age is increasing, that will be the reason of UTI because as age is progressing, there are other things like BPH and large prostate. That will be the reason of UTI. STI can give rise to UTI, renal stone can give rise to UTI. So all these things we need to cover. So sometimes you will see like when they ask the question in the OSCE exam, old person coming with UTI, the reason for UTI might be BPH, the benign ha prostate hypertrophy, isn't it? So that's how we need to do in these kind of cases. So what kind of examination investigation we have got? We have got general physical examination. We need to check the vitals because we need to see if the patient is having fever or not abdomen examination is really important and digital rectal examination that is very very important this is how we're gonna find a large prostate plus we'll see what kind of prostate it is if it is soft or if it is hard if it is hard it might be cancer as well so accordingly we will see in terms of investigations we have got full blood count urine dipstick will be very very important we are going to see if there are nitrates or uh, like leukocytes are positive in urine dipstick if that's positive that's uti straight away psa definitely we will be checking that will be giving you a better idea if it is bph or if it is cancer ultrasound and cd scan can also be done right so these are the things the investigation will be doing in case of uti now the treatment so what's the treatment for it treatment is symptomatic treatment first of all that's pretty important like we have to we have to give a symptomatic treatment right like if patient has got pain will be giving something for the pain patient has got fever will be giving something for the fevers the patient has got nausea vomiting will be giving something for nausea vomiting so that is must that is very very important that we have to be very careful about that thing now antibiotics so antibiotic we will be giving if the patient has got uti straight away we need to give antibiotics right so we can uh, go for uh, uh, trimethoprim or we can go for uh, nitro furentoin as well right so these things we can prescribe right and again uh, no need to know the dosage and all those things because everything is written in your bnf british national formulary and uh, we can just take the help of that as well. In the hospital also, like nowadays, you will see everyone is using a BNF. They have got the BNF in their mobile phone. So you don't need to learn the dosage and all. That's not something uh, we need to do. We need to know how to come to the diagnosis, how to make the diagnosis, how to rule out the differential. That's the main thing. Right. So that's the treatment for your UTI. Plus, uh, for UTI, make sure we are giving some uh, general advices as well. That's also very, very important. What kind of general advices we can give? We are telling the patient, like, drink plenty of water. That's pretty important. But we have to be very sure because the patient is having nocturia and you tell the patient to drink plenty of water. He might be going now maybe more uh, to the loo, more times, many times to the loo in the evening or in the night or when he's sleeping. That's not a good idea. So make sure we are telling the patient, drink plenty of water in the daytime. That is very important if the patient has got nocturia. And if the patient is a smoker, so that's very important. If the patient is a smoker, we tell the patient uh, not to smoke. 
and alcohol we tell the patient to reduce alcohol intake that is uh, very very important right and try to have uh, uh, like simple diet not uh, too much of spicy food uh, should not be there in the diet so that is something we have to address right so what we are doing we are doing symptomatic lifestyle advices and antibiotics and make sure when you are taking past medical history you are not missing uh, allergy allergy is very very important in this right so we'll be going for every single question here uh, first of all we're asking symptoms we are ruling out the differential in the past medical history asking about other past medical conditions say for example patient has got diabetes that will be making uh, that will be making patient uh, immunocompromised isn't it so chances of uti will increase ask for that ask any medication if patient is taking ask for uh, uh, allergy that is very very important ask for if a patient has got any previous surgery or hospitalization family history all these questions would be very very important and when you come to the lifestyle everything will be covering the smoking alcohol diet physical exercise one very important thing that we have to cover is uh, is a social history an elderly patient make sure you're not missing social history the thing is who is living with the patient if the patient is living alone uh, you might need not be able to send the patient home the reason being this UTI actually can uh, lead to confusion in old patient it is not something uncommon I would say it's pretty common patient will go into confusion right elderly people so what we need to do in that case we have to take social history we have to make sure there is someone at home who is looking after the patient so if patient is saying yes uh, i'm leaving with my partner i've got my son i've got my daughter at home then it is fine if that is not the case make sure you try to keep the patient in the hospital because it won't be safe if you send the patient home he's having uti he's 75 years old so the thing is keep him in the hospital and we can give the warning sign for confusion if there is someone else for example uh, uh, like say son is there so we can tell like I'll we'll discuss the things with your son as well and we'll be explaining it to him if you are behaving something old and you are confused you're drowsy he can bring you to the hospital because uh, UTI urinary tract infection it can actually lead to confusion right so that's how you can uh, cover that part and this is very very important right so when patient goes in confusion elderly people so you might have to do uh, sepsis 6 as well they might go in sepsis sepsis 6 so what is sepsis is a uh, patient has got high pulse rate and low blood pressure high temperature and uh, low saturation in that case uh, we might have to do sepsis 6 meaning we take three things we give three things what we take from the patient we do blood culture we do lactate so we do abg and we check the urine output of the patient and then we have to give something to the patient we give iv fluids we give uh, iv antibiotics and oxygen that's the sepsis 6. so it's not like now but uh, if patient went into confusion but here patient is fine patient is having uti only we are giving the warning sign of confusion so make sure we are uh, not missing that part now we have got bph as well bph is your uh, uh, benign prostatic uh, hypertrophic hypertrophy so what is happening here uh, this prostate it's a walnut uh, shaped gland situated at the neck of the bladder right so what happens as the age progresses this gland also increases in size and it's gonna put pressure on the urethra in your uh, urine pipe so that's gonna put pressure there so what happens uh, it actually doesn't let the urine go out smoothly right and actually it makes uh, a good medium for the bugs to grow and that's the reason you might be having this uh, urinary track infection right so that is explained and why the patient has got bph is just because of age as the age increases the chances that it will also uh, become bigger in size right so what we do for the treatment of bph is straightforward uh, we have got medical treatment we have got surgical treatment but in the beginning itself uh, we always go for medical treatment so we have got tamsulosin and we have got finasteride tamsulosin is alpha 1 receptor antagonist and finasteride is 5 alpha reductase inhibitor what it does tamsulosin it actually helps to relax the muscle in the neck of the bladder because prostate is situated at the neck of the bladder so the muscles there it will help those muscles to relax that is your tamsulosin and finasteride helps to uh, decrease the size of the prostate so that's the reason right 
And that's it. That's how the things work in this kind of station. And you know, these kind of OSCE station, you might uh, see a few questions from your patient side. Doctor, is it cancer? So what do you think? Is it cancer or not? Uh, you have to take the question of cancer and the history taking, weight loss, appetite loss, anemia symptoms, lumps and bumps. If nothing is positive, so it's unlikely to be cancer. Again, in, in uh, OSCE exams, you know, try not to say 100% sure way like it's not cancer. Simply it is unlikely. It is less likely because the history that you, gave, you have given me, it doesn't look like. However, we are going to do all these investigations to make sure uh, everything is fine with you. Like we are going to do PSA, we are going to CT scan. That's how we'll be coming to the conclusion what's happening with this patient. Right, so that is what we will be doing in this kind of uh, scenario. Right, thank you. So now we'll be doing for rectal examination. So for rectal examination, as you know, we'll be doing in cases where we have got symptoms of BPH or cancer. So first of all, uh, for this rectal examination, we have to explain the procedure to our patient. We'll explain it to the patient in this way that uh, we are going to, that I'm going to insert a lubricated blood finger in his back passage to see and to feel how the prostate is, uh, uh, how the prostate feels like, right? And for the purpose of examination, patient has to uh, undress below the waist and we'll tell the patient that we'll be having a chaperone with us throughout the examination to ensure his privacy. We'll be gentle and quick as uh, much as possible and if patient want us to stop, we'll stop at any point of time whenever patient says that. Right? And we want the patient to lie down on his side and usually in the left lateral position. So if you see this mannequin, the mannequin is in the left lateral position. So that should be the position of the patient. So we'll be inserting the glove lubricated finger. So make sure you take the proper lubricant. That's the main thing. <coughs> All right, and after that you want the patient that I'm going to touch you. So what you'll be doing, you can simply just keep your finger for a few seconds on the anus. So the anal sphincter will relax. That's very, very important. Also, meanwhile, you can check like if there is any redness, any swelling, any bleeding, any discharge, or if there's any anal tag, any hemorrhoids, any anal abscess. So these are the things you can check. Even you can tell the patient to cough. And what we are checking, if you're telling the patient to cough, you're checking if there's any prolapse. So these are things that are very, very important that you can do in inspection. Right? And after that, uh, after a few seconds, we'll be inserting our finger. We're telling the patient that I'm going to insert my finger. So you insert your finger and you will see I mean, you will feel the prostate. Prostate is usually felt on the anterior side of the patient body, on the anterior side. So if I'm doing like this, you'll be able to feel the prostate. So what you have to feel the pro what you have to feel in the prostate, you'll be able to feel a median sulcus and two lobes of prostate, right? And if there is enlargement of the lobes, what will be there? Uh, you'll be able to feel that median sulcus will be very deep if both the lobes are enlarged. If it is normal, the median sulcus will not be that deep right and also like if you think it might be cancer then you might be able to feel that one of the lobe is hard or maybe both the lobes are hard so it might be there in case of cancer so you'll be able to feel this prostate on the anterior side right and after that what you'll be doing once you are done with the prostate just make sure you move your finger in all the direction 360 degree to see if there is any other finding you can find in the rectal examination Right. Also, here also you tell the patient to cough. You are uh, again looking for any prolapse and if some structure is touching your finger. Right. And also we tell the patient to squeeze. What we're checking here, we are trying to check the anal tone. So we'll see uh, the anal tone once you tell the patient to squeeze the finger. Right. So these are the things we have to do. And after that, uh, we tell the patient that we're going to take the finger out and gently you will take the finger out and you can look for if there is any like bleeding or any kind of mucus or any stool so you can check and after that uh, you can uh, take off your glove and make sure you offer wipes to the patient you offer wipes you can clean and you can offer wipes to the patient and we we'll tell the patient to dress up thank you so much